I have the Volantex P51D Mustang, 750 millimeter wingspan Warbird, highly modified. It's got a completely different power system in it now than it had stock. But after I put a couple flights on it, I'll meet you guys back at the hangar and I'll talk a little bit about that because I don't think you're going to have to do as much work as I did uh, to get enough power and efficiency on this plane. But uh, let's go ahead and get it in the air. Launching. The wind be picking up. Bring it down a little bit. But this is just an awesome flying P-51 Mustang. Absolutely love this plane. It has pretty good slow flight capability for a Mustang. Isn't that cool? I'm not even using a rudder. This thing tracks so well. I'm just doing bank and yank with it. Getting a little climb out of it there going into the wind. Those big, huge loops or tight loops. Woo, about stalled it there. Well, you saw how tight those loops were, right? <laughs> I cut it no slack. <laughs> that was a little tighter than it wanted to go. <laughs> and it's quiet, isn't it, with that two blade prop? I, you know, the longer uh, I the more time that I put on these planes, the better I can fine tune them. So I increased my expo quite a bit on the aileron and elevator on this plane, and it does feel a lot smoother than it was. I like it. I've got, I set this up pretty aggressive with control surface movement. So with big control surface movements, you need big expo to make it smooth. As you can see by that roll rate, it has a very good roll rate in both directions. We're here and do a roll to the right. Yeah, a pretty symmetrical roll rate left and right. Make a big loop this time. Finish with a split S. This thing has great power now. With this motor that I have in it and this uh, two blade prop. And it's very efficient. The way I fly and, and of course I'm not easy in the throttle. I can get uh, between six to seven minutes of flight out of it if, if, look at the climb, if um, there was no chance that I would have to loiter before I could set it down because of traffic. So I think that's pretty good considering the amount of power it has. And you can see how maneuverable it is. Olentex did a really good job on this airframe. I didn't care for their electronics, but um, the airframe is awesome.
pretty aerobatic P-51 Mustang. And as long as you don't do those real tight loops like I was doing or, you know, require too much of it, it is pretty darn stable in the air. I love it. All right. I guess we better bring it in and land it. Let's go one more circuit so I can check the other direction. Okay, it looks like we're good. She's a bit of a floater. Oh, over on its top. Yeah, I should have slowed down more and put a little more throttle in it. Oh, did I mention it's very durable? <laughs> yeah, we got some big rocks and stuff over here. Uh, all right. And I got some sand in the motor. All right, I think that's clear now. Check my landing gear. Looks good. Check it this direction. It looks good. Okay, so now that... I know it's still one piece. Let's let's put another battery pack in it. It's awesome. Isn't that an awesome flying P51D? Man, this thing is just a joy to fly now compared to what I what I started with. If you guys go back and look at the initial review of this plane, I thought it was cursed. I had that many problems with it. Anyway, I'll see you in a minute. So I checked the voltages after I landed. I still had approximately 3.7 by 5 volts per cell. So yeah, you could get, I could get, the way I fly, I could get a good 6 minute flight time out of it, leaving a little over 3.5 volts per cell. So that's pretty awesome. Alright, so let's see if we can get it in the air again. With the power system that I have in it, I launch, well, you saw it take off there. It takes off real nice. I launch it at about 70% throttle with it, with a wingtip launch. And that seems to work out really well. They're just, they're just not a good place to hold on to the bottom of this airframe to launch it, you know? So, so I do wingtip launches with it. Can I do three not so tight loops? There we go. I didn't make it mad at me that time. I didn't pull too tight. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't like that. I think it's nice that this tracks so well that you can, you can just fly this bank and yank. So one of the other things I had to do uh, after the first couple of flights with it when I first got it was they had, look at that climb, they had, um, overcompensated with the rigging on the ailerons to over overcome the torque of the motor and so it was rolling it was rolling much faster against the torque than it was with the torque and so I just went in and basically bent that rigging on the ailerons so that I could get symmetrical roll rate left and right and as, as you saw um, they're pretty symmetrical in both directions. But I went back and I looked at my thrust numbers on my motors. The, the, the stock motor that comes with it, 
they refer to it as a 20, I think it's a 2808. But what Volantex does, and I know there are some vendors that do this, and I don't agree with how they measure their motors, but they got the 28 millimeters by measuring the outside of the bell rather than the magnets on the on the poles, you know? So in actuality, if you look at it the way most other vendors uh, measure the diameter and height of their motors, is actually a 2208 motor, not a 2808 motor. And spinning that four blade prop, it just, it was over propped, you know, with that four blade prop. That's all I can say is it was over propped. And I think it's, it was originally designed for uh, 2S LiPo. And this should have, this should have been set up for a 3S LiPo from the beginning. And that, that's what I have in it. So I'm running it with a little 3S LiPo. I'm not easy in the throttle. And I can still get between six to seven minutes of flight time out of it. Um, using quite a bit of its power, you know. So yeah, once I put a, once I changed out the power system and, and put a 3S LiPo in it, it was a completely different plane. And so that's, that's what I recommend. And I'll, I'll give you the specs when we get back to the hangar, but. Check that out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty cool for a warbird, I think. Whee! Try not to run out of talent here. I've been known to do that from time to time. Yeah, so I'll be updating my setup file for this plane. Oh man, we got company coming. Great. All right, so I'm going to have to loiter here for a minute. But, um,. Yeah, there we go. Good thing I get six minutes of flight time out of it, huh? But um, what was I saying? Now I've lost my, now I've lost my train of thought. He messed me up. He's driving a dune buggy. I would have thought he'd be driving faster than that. It's gonna take him forever to get through here. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. You're driving it like a grandma. Come on, dude. All right, so let me check the other direction again. Okay, it looks like free and clear to navigate. I can't believe he's idling through here with a doom buggy. <laughs> That's not the way I would be driving it, I'll tell you that. All right, let's see if I get a little better landing this time. That was a little better. Ah, just too many ruts, but that was a little better landing than I had the first time. Anyway. I'll, I'll pick up my train of thought again. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we get back to the hangar because I was I was trying to fly this and see what he was going to do at the same time and lost my train of thought but anyway that was a couple of fun flights I haven't flown this plane in a while and um, it's absolutely fantastic I love this plane now it took a long time to get it there kind of reminds me of my F-86 Sabre jet took me a long time to get it where it is but once I got it there, it was it was it was almost worth the effort. What can I tell you? So anyway, I'll see you guys back at the hangar. Okay, I lost my thought process out there. I forgot where I was. Uh, I'm trying to keep an eye on Granny and the Doom buggy, but uh, that's also a very good example of why I cut my flights short. Because I never know when Granny and <laughs> when 
when Granny of the Doom Buggy is going to be idling by, you know. I had the I had to run how many circuits before I was able to land? I don't know, four, five. But anyway, I'm glad that I cut it short for, for uh, occasions like that rather than having to put the plane down in the scrub. But anyway, what I was trying to say was, you know, I had made a couple of adjustments on the plane, so there will be a link in the show notes to the updated setup file and the, uh, and the uh, OpenTX model file. So I have, uh, I have uploaded the new version, so if you guys are interested in that. But I always, once I do a modification on a plane, you know, especially this one where it was just cursed for me from the get-go when I reviewed it, and I wasn't real happy with the performance in the end. So uh, whenever I do modifications like this, I always go back and think, okay, if I had to do it over again, is there a better way of doing it? Could I have done it differently? That maybe would have been less expensive. Um, what I have in it, I replaced the entire power system. I replaced the prop, the motor, the ESC. I have a Racer Star BR 2208 1400kV motor. The prop is a JXF 7x4 composite prop. And the ESC is a Hobbywing Skywalker 20 amp ESC. So I replaced everything in it. But um, here's the numbers on my power system. And then I'm going to give you an optional way of getting the same performance out of this plane without having to replace everything in the power system. So um, at full throttle, I get 517 grams of thrust. At 100% uh, throttle, it's 0.9.7 amps, so it's pretty efficient. At 50% throttle, it gives me 202 grams of thrust. At 50% throttle, it pulls 3.2 amps. So my gram per watt efficiency at a 100% throttle is 4.3 grams per watt. Very efficient. At 50%, I get 5.1 grams per watt. So it's a very efficient power system. That's why I get, I have the amount of power that I have and the amount of flight time I get. Now, if I had to do this over again, because this is an easier way of doing it, um, if I wanted to keep the stock motor in it, which is a 2208 1800 kV motor, I would definitely be running this on the 3S no matter what. But if you use a KMP, it's a high efficiency composite sport prop, I love that prop. I use I use that prop on my Ishin F16 kit where I put a pusher motor and prop in it. I use that prop in my GFS DIY F22 Mini version three. You guys, unlimited vertical with that prop. I, I so I have a lot of those props, and um, uh, I'm giving you a link in the show notes to five, a five pack of those props. But I would put that prop on that stock motor. And I went back and looked at my looked at my numbers for a 2208 1800 kV with different props on it, and this is the prop that I would put on the stock motor. It's a two blade prop, and 100% throttle it will give you 580 grams of thrust. That is what 63 grams more thrust than what I currently am getting. There, there's a cost to that. It's pulling 11.5 amps at full throttle. So you could probably get away with a little 12 amp ESC if you wanted to save some money. But I wouldn't trust the stock 10 amp ESC pulling 11.5 amps. Okay, at 50% throttle, it'll give you 297 grams of thrust. That is 95 grams more thrust at 50% throttle than what I'm currently getting. Okay, and the efficiency at 50% uh, at 100 percent throttle is four grams per watt, still very efficient. At at uh, 50 percent, it's 5.1. So that's also very efficient. It's a little less efficient because it's you know it's spinning faster. It doesn't have quite as much torque, even though it's a smaller prop with less pitch. But or excuse me. The 50% was 4.6 grams per watt, and the 100% efficiency was 4 grams per watt. So you're going to have more thrust, but if you use that amount of thrust, if, you, if you're as hard in the throttle as I am with my setup, you're going to get less flight time. 
if you're easier in the throttle than I am when I'm flying it, and you can be because you've got more power, um, then you should be able to get the same amount of flight time that I get. So that saves you the cost of the motor. The props come in a five pack, so they're very, very cheap. I think they're just a little over a dollar per prop. 12 amp speed controllers are pretty darn cheap. It's an excellent, excellent airframe. You saw how it flies. This is one of my favorite things to put in the air. I have a blast with it every time I put it up in the air. And I love the performance. So, if you guys, and this is the plug and fly version, they make a ready to fly version and a plug and fly version. The plug and fly version does not come with the receiver, of course, it's plug and fly, and this just has a standard manual mode only receiver in it. But they also make a ready to fly that has a gyro in it. So I leave that up to you guys. But a 3S LiPo, sock motor, 6x3 composite sport prop, 12 amp speed controller, you're going to have more power than I currently have. And you should, if you have the same setup, um, you, you should have. Uh, just as good performance and maneuverability and everything in the air. So, anyway, there you go. That will save you some money, you know, not having to buy a, a motor and replace the motor. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the air.